Well, this week uh, marks a pretty important, I think, anniversary uh, in our city's history. Um, something pretty important happened 60 years ago this coming Sunday. And to recognize that, I'd like to invite the, there's a planning committee for the uh, recognition of the 60th anniversary of the Katz Drugstore sit-ins. And I would uh, invite that planning committee to join me up here. I never know whether to stand in front of the podium or behind it. Well, let's stand next to it. We'll try that. Here, Marilyn, join me over here. <laughs> you might get blocked there. They're okay. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of history here. We've we've uh, drafted a resolution to recognize that, and maybe that's a good place to start. So why don't we why don't we hear about why we're here this morning? And uh, clerk, if you would please read the resolution. Whereas on August 19, 1958, school teacher Claire Looper led a courageous group of young people to Katz Drugstore on Main Street in downtown Oklahoma City and conducted a sit-in to change the policy at Katz that did not allow African Americans to be served lunch at the counter. Whereas Claire Looper was joined by a handful of adult chaperones and over a dozen original sit-inners who were members of the local NAACP Youth Council and ranged in age from 6 to 17. Whereas, even though the participants were trained in nonviolent protest, a tactic such as this was a dangerous approach in a time when segregation and Jim Crow laws still dominated in Oklahoma and elsewhere. Whereas, Katz Drugstore eventually changed its policies in response to the sit-ins. In June of 1964, the Oklahoma City Council passed an ordinance banning racial discrimination at places where food is served. Whereas Claire Looper's success was reported nationally through the NAACP and inspired later activism in Greensboro and elsewhere, and sit-ins became a key tactic in the civil rights movement of the 1960s that led to many important changes in civil rights improvements across the nation that extended well beyond the policies protested at Katz. Whereas Claire Looper continued her work in Oklahoma City, leading sit-ins and other protests for many years following the events of August 19, 1958, and she was arrested 26 times for her civil rights efforts. And upon her death in 2011, the New York Times called Clara Looper a seminal figure in the sit-ins of the civil rights movement. Whereas in Oklahoma City, Northeast 23rd Street is known as the Claire Looper Corridor, and it is considered important by this council to recognize the incredible achievements that were sparked on August 19, 1958, the positive effect it had on Oklahoma City, and the inspiration it gave to civil rights activists around the nation. Whereas it is hoped that the courageous actions of August 19, 1958 continue to inspire us in Oklahoma City to stand each day for a more just society. And this council stands ready to work with interested parties in the future to permanently commemorate the site of the 1958 city. Whereas each year, Claire Looper staged a Freedom Fiesta celebration to celebrate the city's civil rights achievements. Now therefore, be it resolved by the mayor and council of the city of Oklahoma City that on the 60th anniversary of the Katz Drugstore sit-in, that they do hereby thank and commend Clara Looper and the original sit-inners of August 19, 1958, and in honor of their legacy, does hereby proclaim August 14 through August 19 to be Freedom Fiesta Week in Oklahoma City. Oh. <laughs> Well, there's a, there's a few people I want to hear from. Um, Joyce, would you mind introducing, first of all, everybody that's on this committee that's up here today? He's making me the chairperson. <laughs> <laughs> With us, we have first the, the young lady who said in their meeting, NAACP youth meeting, 
why don't we just go down there and let's just make them serve us. That was the essence of her message. And that statement, that question, was no other than Marilyn Lupa Hildred, the daughter of the late Clara Lupa. <laughs> the mayor asked who was the chairperson of this planning. We told him we have no chairpersons. We're all chairpersons because this is truly a historical day. We also have Joyce Jackson. She serves as our media director, but again, she was a participant in the sit-in. Marilyn was one of the original 13, but the rest of us were participants, so we have Joyce Jackson on this committee. So let's give her a hand. Thank you. <laughs> J.B. Williams, he's the youngest, and we say, if we don't tell our story to young people, if we don't tell our history, history may repeat itself. So we're so happy to have J.B. Williams, who is a rapper. He has so many titles. We didn't know we were with a VIP person, but J.B. is also on this committee. <laughs> and everything starts with prayer. And the faith community was certainly a part of the sit-in movement. So we have the great Reverend J.A. Reed, the pastor of Fairview Baptist Church. And he has been a pastor over 50 years. He participated in the sit-in. Also, he did some things in Stillwater. So his history goes back to Clara Lupa. And he tells the story that Clara Lupa was the only lady who could call his house and talk about him to his wife, and he took it. So we are so happy to have Reverend J.A. Reed. <laughs> and last but not least, many of you might have read in the paper, the University of Oklahoma named a department after Clara Lupa. It's called the Department of African and African American Studies. We have the chairperson of that department from OU serving on this committee, Dr. Corliss Hill. <laughs> now yours truly was a student of Clara Lupa at Dungy School. And I tell people we had Clara Lupa every day and we had her on Saturday. So we were glad not to have her on Sunday. <laughs> but I can assure you that every moment we had with her, priceless moments. And we want to thank you, Mayor and City Council, for this tribute. We cannot say enough. Under the leadership of Clara Lupa, if it had not been for Clara Lupa, where would we be today? So we take pride and we are honored to play in the 60th anniversary. Kicks off Thursday at the Oklahoma History Center. Friday, we will be at the Fairview Baptist Church. It's at six o'clock, Thursday at seven o'clock. Saturday morning, we're gonna do a re reenactment of the city in. Some of you may wanna join in because one thing we emphasize Blacks and whites march together in order for this achievement to take place. But when we say you want your freedom, you want your freedom, yeah, you're going to walk. Yeah, we want to reenact that on Saturday morning. Saturday evening at 7 o'clock at the renewed Paige Woodson Auditorium, now called Auditorium at Douglas, and we're saying the old Douglas High School, just a little bit of history, that's at 7 o'clock. And the final program on Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. at 5th Street Baptist Church, that's the home church of the late Clara Lupa, and we have as our guest speaker the Reverend Amos Brown. He's the pastor of 3rd Baptist Church, 
San Francisco, California. So if you can't attend all four events, try to make at least one. And we invite all sit-inners to be there every day because history cannot repeat itself. And we are so proud that we're able to be in this room together and reflect 60 years ago, if it had not been for Clara Lupa, where would we be? Thank you. Now, I also wanted to acknowledge we've got so much leadership from the Northeast community in here this morning. I've seen folks from Millwood and the Black Chamber and, and more members of the faith community. And I also, he just walked out, so we, you'll have to tell him, but uh, I saw Representative Jason Lowe. I see Senator Anastasia Pittman. I see Representative George Young. And uh, grateful for all of you having joined us for this uh, momentous morning here at City Hall. And uh, I'm going to move, there is, this is a resolution, so as you saw earlier, there's a bit of a cliffhanger here, but, but I'm going to hold that for a moment uh, and, and ask uh, Marilyn if you wouldn't say a few words, and we're, we're honored to be in your presence this morning. Thank you very much, Mayor. On behalf of my mother that sleeps in Yonder's grave, on behalf of the thousands of young people that walk the streets of Oklahoma City, to make Oklahoma a better place. On behalf of our Oklahoma City Police Department, who worked diligently to, so that Oklahoma City would not have the violence that other cities have, I say thank you. I say thank you from the bottom of our heart. Because if the young people in Oklahoma City had not sat down against injustices and prejudice then the young people throughout this country would have never stood up. So I want to thank the committee who thinks enough of my mom to keep the legacy going. And I want to thank you because if you know anything about the history of Oklahoma City, you know that the sit-ins were not made up of people that have. They were made up of the have-nots. So we're always grateful to everyone for whatever role they played in the movement, whether it was a prayer, helping us get out of jail, whatever, we say thanks to you. And to the greatest city in America, Oklahoma City, we're not where we need to be, but we're a long ways from where we are. 